Okay, so we're now on number two of Dr. Long's Lecture 19 through 20 review questions. And in the first part it says, in the 1950s, Earl W. Sutherland Jr. and his colleagues carried out pioneering experiments to elucidate the mechanism of action of epinephrine and glucagon. Given what you have learned in this chapter about hormone action, interpret each of the experiments described below. Identify substance X and indicate the significance of the res results. So I'm just going to keep this in mind as we go through all the parts. Um, start with part A. It says, addition of epinephrine to a homogeneity of normal liver resulted in an increase in activity of glycogen phosphorylase. However, if the homogenate was first centrifuged at a high speed and epinephrine or glucagon was added to the clear supernatant fraction that contains phosphorylase, no increase in the phosphorylase activity occurred. So we saw in number one how signaling pathways work. Um, just to quickly review, in the case of epinephrine, epinephrine binds to the beta adrenergic receptor. Um, the beta adrenergic receptor activates the G protein uh, by causing it to bind GTP. The G protein goes on to activate adenyl cyclase which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP this is the second messenger. It activates uh, PKA. And then PKA activates phosphorylase B kinase, which activates glycogen and phosphorylase. And then after many steps, um, basically glycogen is broken down and glucose is released into the blood. So to interpret part A, we know that epinephrine does not directly act on glycogen and phosphorylase. Um, various membrane-bound enzymes are also involved, including and the little cyclase, the G protein. So after centrifug centrifugation, the cell is no longer intact. So the pathway is interrupted, and phosphorylase activity will not increase even in the presence of epinephrine. So we're going to go on to Part B now. Part B, it says, when the particulate fraction from the centrifugation in A was treated with epinephrine, substance X was produced. The substance is isolated and purified. Unlike epinephrine, substance X activated glycogen phosphorylase when added to the clear supernatant fraction of the centrifugated, centrifuged homogenate. So because substance X is produced after treatment with epinephrine and X stimulates glycogen phosphorylase, substance X must be the second messenger. Um, going on to part C, substance X was heat stable, that is heat, tra heat, heat treatment did not act affect its capacity to activate phosphorylase. And as a hint, it says, would this be the case if substance X were a protein? Substance X was nearly identical to a compound obtained when pure ATP was treated with barium hydroxide, which removes phosphates by hydrolysis. So the hint helps us a lot here. Proteins are generally denatured in the presence of heat. Um, so we can assume that substance X is not a protein. And the, pro the problem also tells us that X was nearly identical to ATP lacking phosphates, which is basically a description of AMP. Um, this tells us that substance X is most likely cyclic AMP, which we now know is the second messenger in this pathway.